وَأَقُولُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ آيَاتُهُ فَهُوَ الْكَرِيمُ الْمُنْزَلُ وَأَقُولُوا قَالَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَالْمُصْطَفَى الْهَادِي وَلَا أَتَأَوَّلُ A parent fears that having more children will lead to a lower quality of tarbiyah particularly in countries where things are difficult for Muslims. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. This is a question which is often asked and it's asked in many different forms regarding whether it is permissible or even what the advice would be regarding cutting down the number of children not because of a fear of poverty or something like that, but because of a concern over the tarbiyah of those children. I don't feel I'm able to raise more than such and such a number of children, for example. But we want to start by saying that there are a number of problems with the approach of not having children because of a fear over how they will be raised. First of all, the general command of the Prophet ﷺ to have many children. We spoke about this extensively in the Muslim family course and we mentioned the ahadith in which there is an encouragement to have many children. The Prophet ﷺ said, تَزَوَّجُ الْوَدُود الْوَلُود Marry the woman that will, she is loving and she will bear you many children. Some of the narrations, فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ بِكُمُ الْأُمَمْ because I am going to boast of your numbers before all of the other nations. So this idea of limiting the number of children that we have, it would seem at least initially that it, it goes, it, uh, there's a contradiction or there's an opposition to the command of the Prophet Wasallam to have many children. The second point, the fact that good Muslims having many children is actually the solution and if everyone took the approach that they said, because we fear the way society is going, the way the country is, that I should just have one child or two children, then that would actually decrease the number of good people in the society and decrease the number of practicing Muslims in the society. But perhaps one of the biggest problems with this approach is the fact that you don't know which of your children will be guided or which of them will be misguided and you don't know which of them will be of more benefit to you than others. Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran, آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاؤُكُمْ لَا تَدُرُونَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ لَكُمْ نَفْعًا Your fathers and your children, you don't know which of them is going to benefit you more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You don't guide who you want to guide or who you love or you would love to be guided, but Allah guides whoever He wants. So what's to say to a person that if they have two children rather than three, it's those two children that will be of benefit to them, it's those two children that will be guided, and the third one wouldn't be. What's to say that it's the third one that wouldn't be the one that was guided, and the third one wouldn't be the one that benefited, and the third one wouldn't be the one that brought good to the parents, and maybe not the second one, for example. So there are problems with this approach. But there is a broader question to answer here. And that is that if a person feels that they can't cope with their children, and they fear that they're going to cause harm by having more children, that their the harm could be caused to themselves and to their children, then are they in this case permitted to use contraception? So the issue comes into one of two issues to begin with. The first is permanent contraception is prohibited in Islam. That is, uh, surgical procedures or drugs which permanently stop someone from being able to have children. And the second category is temporary contraception. And this is allowed for a valid reason, but we don't think it should be a never again type of temporary, where someone says that we're going to continue to use this temporary contraception uh, for the foreseeable future, forever, so to speak. Uh, the evidence for the permissibility of temporary contraception in some circumstances is in the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah, and the hadith is narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, that he said, Kunna na'zil wal-Qur'anu yanzil. 
he said that we used to practice a we used to practice a particular etiquette of withdrawal and uh, this uh, etiquette of withdrawal which is obviously a kind of uh, contraception we used to practice it at the time when the Quran was being revealed meaning during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we used to practice it so in this, uh, Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, he was asked a question regarding this and he said that, the translation of which is, he said that if a woman, uh, she has many children and it is hard for her to look after them and raise them the way that Islam would tell her to do so because of how many they are, then there is no objection or there is no reason why she cannot be given some kind of temporary contraception which will space out the pregnancies for this great maslaha, she said, for a maslaha, lihadihi al-maslaha al-azima, this great benefit in order for her to be in a situation where she doesn't harm, it doesn't harm herself and it doesn't harm her children and the sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala used this hadith of Jabir as an evidence for that. So in conclusion, what we say is that we don't think the default position should be people worrying about the state of society and saying the answer of the state of the, of the world we live in today is to have less children. Actually, we think that the answer of the state of the world today is to have more children, not less children. Uh, because that will bring about a situation where we have a greater number of practicing Muslims. And because of the reason that we don't know which of those children will be uh, uh, you know, positively affected or negatively affected. And so this idea of I'll just stick to two and not three or three and not four. We don't see a problem, inshallah ta'ala, with a family, husband and wife together. And this is a joint right because they both have the right to have children. Making a decision to space out pregnancies in order to make it easy to look after their children each according to the society that they are living in but where we see the problem being is that when people use this uh, temporary spacing out and they make it a, a permanent thing a long-term thing where they say we have no plans for any more children at the moment rather what it should be is we want to give a little time to allow the woman to recover or to allow her uh, some of her very young children maybe there's a child who's you know for example uh, a, ba a newborn baby or just in the age of uh, breastfeeding for example and we want that child to get a little older so that she can manage another child and so on and so forth we don't see there to be a problem in this inshallah ta'ala providing that it is done for the right reasons and not for the wrong reasons and no doubt, tarbiyah, being able to look after your children and being able to give them their rights is a big part of, uh, and it is given proper consideration in Islam, and it is a reason to space out pregnancies, as Sheikh bin Baz rahimullah ta'ala said. However, it shouldn't be the case that people either go into the idea of totally not having children or totally having much fewer or many fewer children because they're worried about the situation in their society, um, and likewise, uh, that it shouldn't be the case that people are taking a temporary measure and making it as though it was a permanent one. Uh, so they're using some temporary method of contraception, for example, but they are doing so in a way which is that I'm not going to stop this. I'm going to continue this, uh, you know, and that that in the end resembles the same kind of permanent issues that or permanent contraception that the scholars had uh, declared to be prohibited. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the Day of Judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.